Hi, welcome back. This is the last section of this course, and it is on the most exciting topic in my view, which culminates into which culminate a lot of aspects of this course, and it is broadly on the basics of pattern formation and development and growth. And guest lecture last week was indeed prelude to this, an introduction to some of the very exciting research problems that are being tackled using biophysical methods, uh, ranging from microscopy, hardware development, image analysis techniques, um, basically programming and uh, object detection, all the way to mechanical models of cell and tissue development. So for today, I'm going to broadly uh, discuss a few aspects which relate to the biophysics of development in terms of morphogen gradients, move on to describe, discuss a very famous model called the French flag model, French, French flag model, I'm sorry, stripe formation in Drosophila and the role of reaction division models, scaling and precision, and cell center finding in cell division. These are the topics for that I hope to cover today. So let's get to it. Biological pattern formation has been seen at multiple scales. And what we have talked about so far has been mostly focused on self-organized pattern formation in the sense of microtubule formation, actin formation. In fact, what we did not speak much about virus self-assembly and uh, many other structures that can spontaneously form. Lipids was another example which we talked about last semester. But there are also higher level structures that can form from these subunits or uh, components like cytoskeletal elements, such as stereocilia, which are found in auditory hair cells. This is sort of in the figure B here. What you're looking at on the right hand side are now even more complex structures in the eye of the Drosophila formed by lens cells which form these beautiful uh, geometric patterns. They are almost like something that someone would have drawn or made as a pattern on the wall of a, of a of an historical structure, for instance. And in fact, it goes on further with uh, the pigmentation patterns that you see in natural animals. I mean, this is in fact uh, the tiger's stripes, the very symmetric and colorful patterns of flowers, which in fact is what makes them very attractive, perhaps for us from a neurobiology perspective. Uh, but also acts often as guidance cues for bees and pollinators. And finally, at even larger scale structures, multiple organisms flocking together, like these geese or schooling fish. So pattern formation is almost inherent in biology, but this slide is only meant to remind you that this happens at many different scales, all the way from hundreds of nanometers in the case of the flagellar assembly of Chlamydomonas to the multicellular structures formed in Drosophila eye lenses and inner ear cells, inner ear hair cells, all the way to coat formation and floral patterns and forming which happens over tens of meters at a time. So we're gonna focus on the most fundamental model for the pattern formation at the cellular and tissue level. And for that, we're gonna call up a model, a conceptual model initially, uh, which was proposed by Louis Walpert, who is who has just recently passed away, called the French flag model, or what I'm going to refer to now as the FFM. The idea of the French flag model is the following, that there is an initial morphogen gradient, that's the green line here. This leads to boundaries being set up due to the concentration differences. And these concentration differences result in downstream signaling at some thresholds T1, T2, leading to gene expression and differentiation. And this, in essence, is the key to this fundamental biological question that when the DNA of every cell that is dividing is the same, then how come cell fates differ? And uh, this is something that every biologist knows as, a, as an important question, but certainly from a biophysical perspective, what is often missing is understanding the how. How do these processes happen? A geneticist will try to find a network, a biochemist will try to find interactions, and a biophysicist will try to find models or patterns. And that's what we're going to try and focus on. So we're going to talk a little bit about this Drosophila system, which uh, I'm sure you've gone, come through, gone through already in the developmental biology course. 
because it there is so much known already about it. It is a model organism. It's a model organism because we studied it. We've got the genome. We've got the proteome. We've got the interactome. We've got the metabolome. We've got all the ohms. And now we just need to make sense of it. And we can't, right? Or not completely. So what we're looking at here is the anterior-posterior gradient in the Drosophila embryo, which forms these classical embryonic patterns and regulates gene expression. So there is a hierarchy, as you can see from top to bottom. The bicoid is uh, the most upstream of them all. It is also called a maternal gradient because the mother, uh, the mother cell that laid mother fly, I'm sorry, that laid this uh, egg, laid down molecules of bicoid at the anterior end. And these molecules are were laid in the form of mRNA. So let's see if I can draw the embryo. So like the nice image here. And these mRNA molecules then go on to produce protein molecules of bicoid, which of course will be more wherever the mRNA was laid down. And if they are transported or diffused through the embryo, then fewer and fewer as we go backwards. This is what leads to this apparent gradient of concentration from the anterior to the posterior in terms of the bicoid gradient. Now, it turns out that the regulatory effects of bicoid are such that it leads to a subsequent gradient in the expression of a gene called hunchback. The expression pattern of the gene hunchback in turn leads to a pattern in the formation of striped pattern of a gene called giant that in turn leads to the expression of a gene called cripple in a certain band and that leads to a stripe 2 protein expression called even skipped on the gene Eve. The expression of Eve by gene regulation is very complex and this 1.5 kb upstream region of the gene coding sequence of EVE, that is uh, even skipped, demonstrates that giant, the yellow box, cripple, the green box, hunchback, the red box, and bicoid, the blue boxes, all upstream act, act upstream of this gene to regulate its expression, producing something that looks like this. Bicoid, remember, is the most primitive, or in time, in developmental time, it's the first gradient that forms, that's the blue line. And uh, downstream of it, hunchback forms. Beyond hunchback, we get, as we had discussed, giant. And after giant, we get cripple. Now, it turns out that the expression of even skipped Eve in the purple band is a very narrow band in this 39 to 45 percentage of the anterior posterior axis position. All this data, incidentally, is taken from immunofluorescence measures of protein stained by antibodies. And in such a case, the even skipped expression, which if detected by a Laxeb uh, fusion promoter, uh, a fusion reporter, shows this very nice narrow banding pattern <clears throat> that you can see in this bluish dye that is formed as a substrate. But turns out there's something more going on. So if we now look at the bicoid gradient, so suffice to say, I guess we are going to ask the question that not most geneticists don't ask, which is most geneticists will, you will find, try for very obvious reasons to find the mechanism. How does BCD, bicoid, express hunchback, cripple, and uh, giant, and how does that then combine to affect the localization of even skip? Because we are trying to ask, how does even BCD form a gradient? What, what is the basis of the formation? And asking such simple, seemingly simple questions surprisingly gives very interesting answers. So what you're looking at here are mid-plane and top views. That is to say the embryo is a 3D object. So you're looking at the cigar from the center and you're looking at it from the top. And what you look at it from the top, when you look at it from the top, what you see are these punctate loci, these uh, yellow, bright gray spots of fluorescence. This, by the way, is nothing but nuclei. These are cellular nuclei. And in these three species, what you also notice, that is L. sericata, Drosophila melanogaster, and Drosophila buski, that the sizes of the embryos are also different. So for the remainder of this class, I'm going to discuss the mechanism by which the BCD gradient is formed, the models that are used to describe it, and whether the experimental data and the models even can be reconciled to one another.